Hello everyone, my name is Michael Shacklock and I do neurodynamics. This year, 2020, is the 25th anniversary of the birth of or introduction of uh, neurodynamics into the physical health sciences. It was in 1995 when I wrote my first peer-reviewed paper called Neurodynamics. And it uh, marked the introduction of some key concepts, one of which was the integration of mechanics and physiology of the nervous system, where I proposed that they should be considered in our area dynamically interdependent. So change mechanics and we can change physiology. Press on a nerve and we change the blood flow in the nerve. And that could then be an access point for symptomatology to develop. However, before then, uh, we should just quickly review some of the key events. The first one was in t about uh, 4,800 years ago when Imhotep did a leg raising maneuver uh, on a patient with back pain. And that was documented then. It was at the time of the Egyptian pyramids were being built and there were wars and battles. And it seemed like Imhotep had evaluated some people who had been injured at a bat in a battle. Then the 1880s came along and in between not much happened. Uh, 1880s came along and a number of European physicians uh, discussed nerve stretching where they would put massive forces on nerves and, and observe what happened in cadavers. And then in 1959, which is to me fascinating, the three main neurodynamic tests for the major nerves of the upper quarter were fully documented by a, in a German practical anatomy textbook. The first one, position of maximum tension of the median nerve, position of maximum tension of the radial nerve, and position of maximum tension of the ulnar nerve. What was really interesting also was on the other side of each page, the same positions were demonstrated, but in the opposite direction. So there was position of maximum relaxation of the median nerve, position of maximum relaxation of the radial nerve, and position of maximum relaxation of the ulnar nerve. So in as early as the 1950s, medical doctors were thinking of, about nerves mechanically. Then again, not much happened until finally in about 1978 and 79, Robert Elvey, uh, uh, an Australian physiotherapist based in Perth, Western Australia, proposed that the, we should use these techniques as the straight leg raise of the upper limb. And he did a number of cadaver studies showing the movements of cervical nerve roots in the, uh, the foramen and the cervical spine uh, and put forward the uh, various ideas on how to make diagnosis and treatment. To me, that was a huge step forward because it created new opportunities for us to do research and clinical practice. And then, of course, David Butler came along in the late 1980s and published his book called Mobilization of the Nervous System in 1991. Now that to me was huge because it then moved us into the idea that we could diagnose and treat an organ or a system um, with universal techniques. And so to me it was an amazing step forward. Now about that time, David Butler, Helen Slater and I were practicing together in our clinic, bouncing ideas off each other. And I came to the, the point that we should probably include other material, and that was based on the idea that we were applying significant forces on nerves, we were mobilizing nerves as a specific organ and, and tissue, of course, but to me there was more. And the two key aspects were integrating mechanics and physiology of the nervous system and uh, making uh, our understanding of nervous system related to musculoskeletal function. So mechanics and physiology of the nervous system were, were described in as dynamically interdependent and then that would be a gateway to symptomatology but also how we move and how we press on nerves and how we pull on them etc might be also a gateway to sensitivity issues and therefore symptomatology as well. So to me a step forward was uh, taking the cornerstones that were established in the research so that we could use those in clinical practice. Now, the next step again for me was clinical application of that because it, it was only a conceptual framework. To me, the benefit is, is giving benefit to the community. And so clinical practice is a cornerstone or key point about what we do, a focus. And so I then wrote a book called Clinical Neurodynamics, and that was how to, how to apply these cornerstones and link them to uh, physiology, mechanics, 
symptomatology as people move. Now we know that the nervous system does not move in isolation, it moves with respect to the musculoskeletal system. So to me clinical neurodynamics is a, is a clinico-scientific diagnosis and treatment system based on functional disturbances. It's not medical diagnosis, it's functional diagnosis and treatment. Now I also have to show you, this is the, 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 my original paper in 1995. It was published in the journal Physiotherapy. That was my first peer-reviewed paper. And that was, that's, the, that's the framework on which we base neurodynamics these days. I've been asked since then, um, has much changed? And I'm happy to say not much. We've changed the, um, uh, the way we view neuro, neurodynamics in some ways. We now know that it's not, not really a direct, an abnormal neurodynamic test is not a direct reflection of neuropathy, but it's, it probably removes subgroups of patients who have movement-related nerve pain. So I'll say that again. It probably uh, extracts a subgroup of people who have movement-related nerve pain. And to me, that's a really important group of people to treat. So I just want to say thank you very much for listening. Again, happy anniversary, 25th anniversary, Neurodynamics. Now, you can get a free download of that paper at the Neurodynamic Solutions website. That's neurodynamicsolutions.com. You can go to the front page, click the link, and you can get a free download of that paper as a historical record and a framework on which to base Neurodynamics.